Trump's facing five cases from four Democrat prosecutors with zero victims. And Democrats are furious that he still owns a home. Get ready to get even angrier, because on the same day his bond was slashed in half, Trump Social's parent company, Truth Social, their stock soared 35%, giving Trump a $4 billion cash injection. Trump's net worth just hit $6.5 billion on paper, making him one of the world's 500 richest people. Baby, like a boss, let's go. I love it. The one thing, Jerry, on that meme, you gotta, you gotta put some, you gotta put a bass drop. You gotta get, some, get, get me some Trump is your president music. Let's go, man. Let's go. My goodness, have we had a monster breaking news 24 hours. We are going to cover all of it. We left the studio yesterday after getting our recordings done for the day. And I thought it, it was a pretty slow news day. I was like, Rolls Royce, this is like a pretty slow news day. And now, like, I, and, and we've been recording nonstop ever since. Every, every, the wheels have come off. Here, here's how we're going to start the show. Here's how we're going to set the table. We told you that the years 2020 to 2023 was the F around years, the FA, the F around years. Now, in 2024, we have reached the finding out years. And the elites are finding out, and it is glorious. They are dropping like flies. And there's a new one that's caught in quite the interesting fly trap, baby. Let's cover all of it today on Tuesday, March 26, 2024. Trump becomes one of the top 500 richest people on earth as net worth surges to $6 billion. Libs on life support. Diddy, the rapper, Reportedly detained after his homes and mansions in LA and Miami are raided by Homeland Security in a child sex trafficking op? And more Epstein documents are coming out? Oh, baby. Let's go. Expose them all. Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge, the largest bridge in Baltimore, collapses after being hit by a cargo ship. Was it terrorism? What happened? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna break it all down. Here, ladies and gentlemen, Forgiato Blow, the rapper, joins us to talk about Diddy. And Attorney General Andrew Bailey joins the show to talk about new lawsuits to protect free speech. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. Ladies and gentlemen, we are always, always online, okay? Just forever. I, 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 like many of you, sleep right beside my phone, but my phone also sleeps in a comfortable bed. I sleep in a comfortable bed. My phone sleeps in a comfortable bed. A sweet little silent sleeve is where my phone sleeps because silent is the Faraday sleeve that blocks Wi-Fi radiation from reaching my phone or getting into my phone or getting into my device or leaving my device while I'm sleeping, it's sitting right next to my head. It also protects my phone from getting hacked or getting accessed. It may have been, the, the ship crashing into the bridge may have been a cyber track. You do not know. I know this. When friends of mine went to China in the Trump administration on a uh, on a trip, right, with Donald Trump, they all had to turn in their phones because China was going to, like, access their phones and hack them all. And they had to put their phones in little devices like this. You should consider getting a silent device in order to protect you from harmful Wi-Fi and also to protect your information. Go to silent.com today, S-L-N-T dot com. Use the code Benny at checkout for 15% off free and free shipping on qualified orders, S-L-N-T dot com. SLNT.com, Benny for 15%. Okay, baby. We got some percentages to talk about, like Donald Trump's net worth percentage. Donald Trump made billions overnight because his social media app was uh, able to go public, uh, now under the ticker DJT, making Donald Trump one of the 500 richest people on earth. He had dropped off that list uh, mainly due to speculation about what would happen to him given all of the lawsuits. But what we saw yesterday was that the lawsuit in New York faced total imminent collapse. The appeals court cutting the billion dollar, half a billion dollar price tag uh, down to a fraction of that. And then like essentially vacating 
the entire ruling, never a good sign. Remember, Donald Trump's going to take this to appeal. Never a great sign. So that happened live on the show yesterday. That was the first sign that this was not going to be a happy 24 hours for libs. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump is multi-billion dollars richer. Check this out. Truth Social has officially started trading. I'm looking at a gain of 57%. Wow. Tell me more, please, Lauren. I mean, this is this is pretty extraordinary, <laughs> uh, considering Trump owns 60% of the company. Yeah. So the question we've been asking, is it hype? Uh, part of it. I mean, they're, it's estimated to have 5 million subscribers. That's it. You got 2 billion at TikTok. You got X or Twitter, you know, more than that. 3 billion at Facebook. But it is very buzzy because Trump is running for president and the merger and this subsequent stock gain could help him pay his legal bills. And a lot of people want to see him win. Yeah, baby. A lot of people are investing just to support the Donald. Trump Media and Technology Group right now is trading. This is it. D J T. Now, in full disclosure, I uh, uh, do I do not have any deal to push this stock or to to hype this stock. We post on Truth Social like everyone else, right? I'm like a supporter of the president, like everyone else. Uh, we are here to just say, hell yeah, just cry more. The salt must flow, and it is glorious to see this and Donald Trump coming roaring back. The salty, salty libs are seething now because Donald Trump is back on the richest people's list. Forbes was thrilled to rip him off that list. And now Donald Trump is back. Now, Donald Trump uh, has faced some pretty massive penalties in these uh, some of these decisions against him. But even those decisions are starting to be eroded and starting to collapse. And the libs are just freaking out. They are seething right now. There's this lib. I don't understand who, who she is. I don't understand who Kara Swisher is. Suddenly this person is like ubiquitous. This is everywhere. I asked ALX to explain it to me what, like, who, who the hell is Kara Swisher. I don't know. But for some reason, this lady gets dragged on to every single show to be some type of expert. And she was talking this weekend about Donald Trump, who needed an infusion of cash by his own admission. Trump saying that he had $500 million on hand, but that this ruling uh, in New York would have wiped all that out. Right. So Trump posted that on Truth Social. Uh, Donald Trump getting billions of dollars of cash infusion at exactly the right time is making libs seethe. Kara Swisher was on Bill Maher's show this weekend, seething, sobbing and crying the saltiest possible tears. This is our salt. Our first. I mean, we'll do we'll do a couple of these today. This is our first salting of the lib today saying that Donald Trump is one of the luckiest men on earth. Please enjoy the salt flowing as libs just can't figure out the divine hand on Donald Trump. No, he actually actually just got a, he, this guy is the luckiest guy in the world, but Trump social, uh, I mean, excuse me, Trump, it's, it's Trump social, but true social just got permission to go public. Right. And, and so he's, he's, it's his stake because it's a meme stock, a little like game up, um, is worth 3.5 billion, is worth $3.5 billion right now. And it could go higher if people bid it up. Um, so. He definitely made a deal with the double at some something, point. something uh, because yeah. he always lucks out on everything. Yeah, he has I mean, the just best the... enemies. Look at Michael Avenatti. Look at Fonnie Willis now in Georgia. The right. best enemies. Right. Who just it helps him so much. And Merrick Garland fucked it all up. <laughs> He's dithered for th now. We're probably not even going to see any of the trials. He just always lucks his way into everything. <laughs> Some people would call that Providence, the salty, salty libs pouring salt, saying this is just the luckiest guy on earth. And the administration has effed everything up. I mean, not the fact that the administration is going after this guy like they are committed Marxists in the Soviet Union, but they have effed it all up. None of these cases are going to trial. And the embittered libs who hate Donald Trump are saying the guy needs cash and suddenly he's going to get billions of dollars injected into his bank account. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. This is the time. Now, now, yesterday we were live, so we didn't get to uh, uh, we didn't get to actually like suss all of this out. But it was a glorious moment when uh, the appeals court decided yesterday to take that half a billion dollar bond, which nobody there's no such thing as a half a billion dollar bond. Like nobody 
gets a half a billion dollar bond. That, that's never happened before in American history. They're doing this to obviously penalize Trump, to suck the resources dry. The Eighth Amendment actually protects us from uh, excessive bail. So can I get the language of the Eighth Amendment, please? Because I don't have it memorized. I know, I know. I don't have my Eighth Amendment memorized. But I know what it entails. It entails excessive bail, and it entails excessive fines, and excessive penalties. I mean, you could really argue that Donald Trump has a constitutional issue on his hands here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, But the Eighth Amendment obviously uh, is written in order to protect the original colonists from the... Here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Uh, Excessive fines. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. There we go. So how would you how would you call this an excessive fine? Well, Bernie Madoff defrauded uh, thousands of investors, billions of dollars. Sam Bankman freed defrauded thousands and thousands of investors, billions of dollars. Their bails were set at a pittance were set at a fraction of what Donald Trump's bail was set at for a non-crime of paying back his loans. So that's excessive bail. I mean, that that's what you would be able to, you'd be able to effectively argue that in court. You'd be able to take this to the Supreme Court and Donald Trump might be able to get a ruling against the court, against Letitia James. Letitia James might be the person who gets like a, a ruling against her and then Donald Trump may, may be able to bring suit. It's going to be uh, really interesting to see how this plays out, but it's never a good sign when the appeals court is already saying, whoa, 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 you're doing unconstitutional things to this guy. So the appeals court uh, lowered uh, what Donald Trump had to pay yesterday and then struck down an enormous portion of the ruling itself. Like struck, so the judgment by Arthur Edgernon, creepy old washed up hippie who likes taking nude selfies in the bathroom at Planet Fitness, this guy, uh, issued a ruling out of his seething, vile, orange man bad, TDS, deranged hatred of Donald Trump. And the appeals court is already getting to work on this thing. It's kind of like Scott McAfee already like kicking out half of Fannie Willis's charges against Trump. They're like these these higher, uh, more judicial, uh, uh, more ponderous, uh, with jurisprudence uh, uh, courts, with better judges, and not like the super low-hanging sociopaths like Edgernon or Fannie Willis. These courts are taking these rulings and shredding them. It's amazing. When Trump found out about it, there was a uh, special, uh, this was memed into infinity, Donald Trump being asked by the press how he's going to pay off the now now much reduced bond uh, is our base bomb of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Oh, come on. It's too short of a clip. Give me the meme. We made a meme. Boys, give me the give me the Trump thug life meme. Everyone was saying, everyone was saying, this is meme kind of. Donald Trump gets asked, how are you gonna pay the bond? He, cash. Cash. He turns around. He just knows the guy. It's like the guy. It's just ma- it's, it just it's, it's just watching the master do his work. Okay? Get me the meme. Get me the meme, boys. We made one, uh, we made one yesterday. So uh Donald Trump in a press conference yesterday was talking about why they are issuing these, like what the strategy is here. The strategy is to bleed Trump dry. They know he's a rich man. They know he could sell fund for president. He did so in 2016. And they know that he can fight them. Unlike you or me, who does not have the capacity to do the, to fight like this, Donald Trump could. Trump saying they're going to bleed me dry. They don't want me to have any money uh, for my election. Guys, can you give us a little bit more detail about the timing of when you plan to secure the bond and how exactly you're planning to pay the bond? Well, as I say, I have a lot of cash. You know I do because you looked at my statements. I mean, you've been examining my statements for a long time, and I have much more than that in cash. But I would also like to be able to use some of my cash to get elected. They don't want me to use my cash to get elected. They don't want that. They don't want me taking cash out to use it for the campaign. 
And they looked at it, and this judge looked at it, and he's part of the whole deal. And why well, he's such a disgrace for this city. Again, the most overturned judge. There's never been that we can find a, a case where a judge has been overturned now five times. It was four times. Now it's five times. So Donald Trump is making the case that this is obviously meant to liquidate his campaign funds and that all of these rulings are meant to bankrupt him so he cannot run for president, not really to actually put him in jail, but just to extract money from him so that he cannot operate any longer. We also saw yesterday some vintage Trump back at it, Donald Trump talking to reporters in a way that, um, man, harkens us back to old times. Frankly, it's none of your business. Mr. President, you mentioned the cash you had. You said on Friday it's something like 500 million. You intended yeah. to put some of that into the campaign. Now that the bonds have been reduced, are you going to start putting money into your campaign? Yeah. You haven't done that since yeah. 2016. Well, first of all, it's none of your business, I mean, frankly. But uh, I might. I might do that. I have the option. Do you hear the press laughing? Do you hear them laughing and howling? Even the press missed this. Like, obviously the press missed this. The press missed this because they're laughing about it. They're, they're like nostalgic for old Trump. They want old Trump back. They want this Trump back. They miss it. They miss the ratings. They're all going out of business. They're all having their staff cut. They need Trump back. They need Trump as, as much as we need Trump, quite frankly. If any industry in the country needs Trump back, it's actually the press, it's actually the media. Without Trump, my prediction is, and this will age like a fine French wine, pin this right now. Without Trump, you will see the total and complete immolation and abject collapse of cable news, of print media. I mean, they're already on their way to collapse, but like Trump is the one pin that like holds it all together. And when that pin gets pulled, it's over. It's over, game over. Like you, you'll have a, a media apocalypse like you've never seen before ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so of course, the reason why you have that media apocalypse is because the media hates you and hates their audience. They hate their audience and you can tell they hate their audience because of clips like this. This is something that's been happening time and time again, where while Donald Trump is talking, uh, MSNBC and CNN, who are the worst uh, offenders here, cut away. They don't think their audience is smart enough to listen to Donald Trump. They actually hate their audience so much that they don't take the president. This is why when we do lives during Trump events or during big hearings, we shut up. I don't like cut away and we don't talk over what's going on because I know that you are smart enough to actually interpret the event correctly. And I, tr I believe you and I trust you. And, and, and I know that you and me are the same, right? Like, we, like, we're, like um, we're Americans and we're wanting to save the country together. And so we're going to interpret these events the same. And it's not my job to protect you or to cover your eyes because you can't take it. But MSNBC sees that as their job. This is how much they love censorship. The, the people who they censor the very most is not the right, it's the left. They censor for their own audience to protect them from the mean words of Donald Trump. Here we go. He's then gonna make remarks. I'll Bond, just step aside here, Andrea. Yeah, Bond, let's listen. And now they're fighting over days because they want to try and do it during the election. This is election interference. That's all it is. Election interference. And it's a disgrace. will obviously be appealing. But this is a pure case of voter intimidation and election interference. And it shouldn't be allowed to happen. This case could have been brought by the DA, but they... And we're going to... The former president is repeating what he has said often, that this is a case of election interference, which is arguably not the fact. Mara Eliasson, let's, let's you jump in here as well. Um, There's talking about the way that he yeah. has been successfully spinning a yes. lot of this. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it remarkable to see it? It's like watching 1984 in real time. It's like watching a George Orwell novel in real time. It's better to have Andrea Mitchell, the old fossil bat, like mule and bitch over Trump's comments than to actually listen to Trump's comments. This is how much they love censorship. They would rather have Andrea Mitchell, Alan Greenspan's wife, for God's sake, like they'd rather have Andrea Mitchell uh, 
talk to you about what Trump's saying while Trump's speaking live than to listen to Trump speak live. This is how much these people love censorship. They are monsters. They are monsters. And the memes will defeat them, ladies and gentlemen. This is the meme I was talking about from yesterday. Cash. Doug Life. Thank you very much. What's your All right, baby. Donald Trump, you cannot defeat the meme energy. And that meme energy is causing libs to, of course, melt down in the saltiest of fashions. I told you we'd have multiple salty libs on the show. And ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be like a rainy day in the Midwest when the slugs come out and you get the salt out today because it is not just raining. It is pouring right now. Good news for Donald Trump. Former New York assistant DA on MSNBC triggered by appeals court ruling. This is infuriating. And listen to the clip. You're going to love this. Listen to the guy like explain why he's angry, right? So like, okay, explain yourself. Why are you angry, dude? And he's just like, because I don't like Trump. It's incredible. It's, 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 it's a remarkable tr clip. So in, in America, you got a, a right to appeal. Everyone has a right to appeal. This is obviously an egregious ruling that breaks, it is an unconstitutional ruling. And he's like, but, but Orange Man, he's bad. This is the quality of leftist discourse right now. Go. And I, I, honestly, this is so infuriating, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know if I care what the process is that these judges are arriving at. Whatever it is, it's flawed. I can tell you that much. I mean, da David put it well. It's This is a different process for, for, for this person. We have decided that he gets his own private court of justice. He has a private plane. He has a he has private clubs that he lives in. You know, apparently, you know, he, he basically fashioned himself his own private militia to try to take over the Capitol. You know, now he's getting uh, his own private system of justice. This is an absolute travesty. It would not happen for anybody else. Anybody else, it would be like, sorry, buddy, you lost, pay up. For him, he gets his own set of rules. Hmm, interesting. So nobody's ever appealed anything before? Nobody's ever gotten an unjust ruling before? It is amazing. So you call them year zero Marxists, right? So the year zero Marxist is somebody who believes that all history starts right now, that nothing came before. So the way that Democrat, well, so Democrats are trying to look at this lens of American history as though everything is just right now, everything is correct right now, forever, and we have we have perfected a perfect society. All you need to do is look around at the bridge collapsing, and at the uh, sex sting rings of some of the richest and most powerful people in the entertainment industry, and see that they've constructed a horrible society. But this idea that there's never been an unjust ruling in America. And that there aren't unjust laws. Hey, pal, like, have you, do, do you know, like Jim Crow Democrats? Have you, have you ever studied American history? You like to talk a lot about racial equality. Have you ever heard about the, the about, about the three-fifths compromise that Democrats fought for? Or the Civil War? Hey, bro, you ever heard of the KKK who was founded by Democrats with the intent uh, the sole intent at, in, in, the, in their charter, the first line is to hunt down free blacks and Republicans. That's the first line of the charter of the KKK. But this guy's sitting there acting like we were all born yesterday and there's never been people who've weaponized the rule of law for political gain to go after their political opponents with a sick worldview and uh, destroy and like wreck this place. These people are at, like, these people are monsters, okay? They're, they're, they're just monsters. And it's so great to see, that, see them get smacked in the PP. Pee -pee. Somebody who's done uh, quite a bit of that, actually, uh, metaphorically, is uh, Alina Haba, friend of the show, and Donald Trump's lawyer, who was on television talking exactly about this issue um, and doing her Alina Haba thing. Take it away, Haba Haba. 
So what happened today was that Letitia had to eat every single tweet she has posted since the day the twisted order from Judge and Gorin came out with the ridiculous number, with the disgusting injustice on the American people, not just Donald Trump. And I would love to see what she tweeted today because she was having fun posting the interest on a man who has done nothing wrong and a family who has done nothing wrong every single day. And then the appellate division came in and said, Sorry, due process still exists in America. You still get a right to keep your assets until we get to review what all these lawyers are saying was wrong. Eleven weeks, I have never seen something, Jesse, like I saw in that courtroom. It was a travesty on the justice system. And I am so proud of the appellate division for giving us the opportunity. They didn't reverse the case, but they will when they see what we saw, it was a disgrace. And today, there was a little bit of faith in the American system uh, that, that I've lost over the past few years. I'll be honest with you. Do you. Good. Good. So Lena Haba predicting that the court will reverse this. And uh, upon seeing the, the statements of facts, we'll say uh, the damage to the system on a ruling like this is going to be uh, far worse than our hatred for any one particular person in the political arena. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, what's occurring right now, because what they're doing is they're destroying the rest of the country's systems. They're destroying the fact that people always viewed America as a place to invest their money, to park their capital, that property rights would be respected here, that your personal assets would be respected here. That's why New York is a successful state in the first place. Not really successful, but in the past, that's why people went to Wall Street and it's why people went to cities like Manhattan in order to build empires because no king, no viceroy or no communist or Marxist dictator could seize in it, come in and seize everything from you by rigging the courts and rigging elections. But now New York has proven that the entire system is broken and it's fake, fagazi, fagazi, it's not real. And that they can try to seize everything from you. And if, they, if, the, if the appeals court wishes to maintain any semblance of like what it actually means to have an American system that is ruled by law, then they will throw all of this out. And more importantly, they will open up avenues for Donald Trump to sue Letitia James and the attorney general's office. And that may restore some confidence. Kevin O'Leary, a big time New York businessman, uh, making this exact point. I look at this from a completely different point of view. Let's go up to 30,000 feet and talk about the American economy, our ability to remain number one worldwide, and most importantly, attracting foreign capital to invest in America. And the concept uh, and why that happens and has for over 175 years is in our Constitution, property rights are mentioned over 25 times. So this is very important because if you're going to go over to the Middle East or to D Denmark or Europe, where I'm going next week to raise money for American projects, notably data centers, um, when they give $3 billion to you, they want to know their property rights are protected. And so what was happening in New York was extremely scary. And I have to admit to you, in the last two weeks, I kept telling them before our meetings, don't worry, the adults will step in. Something will happen to advance the appellate process. Your rights are protected. Imagine me telling foreign investors that as they watch this roll out in New York. Thank goodness the adults came to the rescue. And now we have a process beginning, a 60 plus percent reduction in this infraction fee. And that really should be getting more to what's balanced. Trump assuring everybody he has the cash to back the bond. These are good advancements towards keeping the stable message about the American brand as the number one economy to invest in. A stable message for the American economy to be a brand to invest in a stable economy. Well, what does that look like? Well, it certainly doesn't look like having bridges collapse overnight, which is what happened in Baltimore, not too far from New York City, where Kevin O'Leary was doing that hit. Now, I want to begin here by saying this is a emotionally charged story for me because my sister currently lives in Baltimore. I've been to Baltimore a trillion times. I've driven across this bridge. It's the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And this is unspeakable what happened. There are still currently people missing. There might be dozens of people uh, that suffered when this boat, which you can see here, this massive container ship, seemingly lost power, 
notice how the uh, power goes out on the ship. All the lights go dark. Uh, the ship keeps moving, and then black plume of smoke starts pouring out of the ship. You can see there, thick smoke. And then the ship plows into the actual bridge in what looks like a power loss once more. You can see the lights on flickering and flashing, something that's not supposed to happen. Then the ship slams into the bridge and explodes the bridge and the bridge falls over and we have no idea how many lives are lost. We know that traffic was on that bridge at the time. There were this big time commuter bridge, it's like five lanes across and it's horrifying. People were actually videotaping um, live when this happened. Uh, our prayers, obviously, for Baltimore. Um, and we look forward to f figuring out what the hell happened here. How does the ship do this? Was this a cyber attack? Because this looks exactly this looks exactly like a cyber attack. Is is what's going on? And so some it's something that's creeped me out is Barack Obama just produced a Netflix show about a massive cyber attack that shuts everything down. And one of the scenes is a cargo ship going off course and like slamming into stuff. This is like predictive programming all over again. It's wild. They did this with East Palestine in Ohio. We're like a year earlier on Netflix. There was a show about like a massive chemical spill in Ohio for a small town and how people had to evacuate because the government had to blow up a train that that flipped over. I mean, it's crazy. Um, what the hell's going on, man? Uh, I don't know. We know that our uh, friend Jack Posobiec has our friend Jack Posobiec has uh, been obviously to this location. Are you saying no, Royce? Is I it, don't we... have G1. I have Posobiec. Okay, got it. Jack's been to this. Jack's been to this location. This was breaking news as of this morning, um, and was able to report from the scene. We called him. He said, "Play the play the reporting." This is what I could get. Here we go. Jack Posobiec here in Baltimore Harbor. You can see just behind me the ship, the Dali, Singapore flagged, Maersk chartered, and the remains of the Francis Scott Key Bridge here in Baltimore Harbor. Helicopters are up, search and rescue, Coast Guard looking for any potential survivors. You can hear the helicopters circling the area. The ship, of course, is stationary. It is stopped directly where the bridge uh, where it struck the bridge, where the bridge once stood. This road 695, of course, completely cut off now from the Baltimore area. And as you can see behind me, the port is completely silent. No ships are moving. Gantries are quiet. It's a quiet day that started out with a catastrophic early morning where overnight, bridge collapsed due to this catastrophic incident. So ladies and gentlemen, there's there, this is being treated as a mass casualty event. Our, our prayers up for Baltimore, our prayers up. Uh, I've been on this bridge a bunch of times. Could have been my sister on this bridge. Could have been me on this bridge. My wife's from this region of the country. You know, if you're like going from Baltimore to Delaware, you would cross this bridge. And so this one hits kind of hard for me. And this is the result of what? A cyber attack, a black swan event, a drunk ship's captain. Something horrible was happening to that ship, and it seemed like the ship was being steered into the bridge. That's what it looks like to me. We'll, I'll, you know, I'll wait for people to like present evidence otherwise, but that's what it looks like to me. You know, thousands of ships. This is America's like largest, one of America's largest import ports and export ports. This is going to wreak havoc on the economy, wreak havoc on the economy of the mid Atlantic. And obviously Baltimore, which is already in a third world state, is going to just utterly collapse. It is going to, it, it, I mean, the, the city is going to implode. Now, uh, with the inability to travel around and through the city, like, like there's going to be traffic, like life's going to be unlivable there. We often say this, get out of cities. We often say this, get out of cities. The reason why we say this is because we have no faith in the people who are running the infrastructure of this country. Now, again, I am not going to lead, I'm not going to lead wild speculations as to what happened here. General Flynn, 
Andrew Tate, some of these guys are saying this is obviously a, a black swan cyber attack. This is uh, predictive programming from the Obama Netflix documentary. Okay. Um, let's let the evidence play out. Uh, something, again, something horrible happened to the ship and it should not have happened. Allegedly, this ship was actually involved in a multiple accidents before. A uh, ship that hit Baltimore Bridge was also involved in a 2016 Antwerp accident. Uh, the ship the ship caused the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore was also involved in an accident at the port of Antwerp in Belgium. So the ship has, has problems. Why was it allowed here? And why did it drive directly into the center of the bridge? Those are big time questions. I don't know the answers to those, but I know the answer to this question. Uh, which is, do we have competent adults in charge of our infrastructure in this country? No, we do not. We have children LARPing as leaders inside of some type of left-wing delusional drug-induced fantasy, which is what you get with a Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, who under his watch has seen train derailments, chemical explosions in towns, the roads and infrastructure of this country have deteriorated beyond, potentially beyond repair. You've seen plane crashes and accidents uh, everywhere. The doors flying off planes, the wheels flying off planes. The state of American infrastructure is nightmarish. It is a hellscape and you take your life into your own hands just by traveling on the roads, trains, planes, or automobiles because it's jack, jack wagon. But here he is, ladies and gentlemen, explaining what's most important at the Department of Transportation, and that is racism that has been built into our roads and bridges. Hmm. Well, maybe Pete, maybe there was racism sewn into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Maybe maybe this is Pete Buttigieg's like favorite day ever because a, a racist bridge is gone. Who knows, ladies and gentlemen? Who knows? Somebody should ask Secretary Pete about that. Somebody should ask. Here's what he's had to say in the past. If an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or it would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, that that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality. And I think we have everything to gain by acknowledging it and then dealing with it, which is why the reconnecting communities, that billion dollars, is something we want to get to work right away. So, uh, as Donald Trump would say, they're not sending their best. They're not sending their best. Somebody is sending their best, however, and that somebody is a state, and that state is the state of Missouri, who has been delivering some real chads to the Senate, obviously, in Josh Hawley and Eric Schmidt, uh, and also to the Attorney General's office, the Attorney General of the state of Missouri, Andrew Bailey joins the show now. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, I, I don't know if you've ever been brought onto the show and introduced as an alpha Chad, uh, but I'm happy to give you that, uh, uh, that honor, sir. Much appreciated. Yeah. You, you, we, we, we could use some more Chads in our government. I guess since we're talking about this, uh, bridge, you obviously are overseeing in Missouri a ton of infrastructure in St. Louis, for instance. There are bridges everywhere. Uh, there's there's bridges and infrastructure all over your state. Like, what what do you see when you see a collapse of a bridge like this in this catastrophic event? Well, first and foremost, my heart goes out to the people who lost their lives or lost loved ones on that that bridge. You know, I'm grateful that there were first responders in the area to help rescue victims. You know, hopefully, uh, you know the reports are true that the, some of the first responders were able to prevent further loss of life. And certainly we celebrate that. And so, um, you know, there, at the end of the day, I, I think your previous segment really painted a, a picture here, which is that when you have an administration focused on a radical woke agenda, instead of the public good, I mean, the, the bridge is there for the public to use for the public good. It's, it's so we can travel in and out of the city. It's for commerce. It's for the public good. And, and to, to turn things like roads and bridges into you know attempts to indoctrinate the public about uh, systemic racism or some of these other you know radical uh, woke ideologies it shows at a minimum misplaced priorities and I think that there's going to be a lengthy investigation here uh, to determine you know what caused this to happen why did this happen and what systems were in place that were supposed to prevent it from happening where did those systems fail and I know that that's where 
your, uh, your, your Maryland state uh, officials are. I know that's certainly where law enforcement is right now, trying to, trying to uh, piece together what went wrong and what can be done to prevent it from ever happening again. But yeah, I have serious concerns when you have a Biden administration that's more concerned about an indoctrination program than practical good. Yeah, so indoctrination programs are something that you are, you sir, are taking on with a uh, with a very muscular putting your shoulder to the wheel on getting rid of indoctrination, obviously in Missouri schools and across the state of Missouri, and with the prosecutors in Missouri, uh, and now apparently with uh, left wing groups that are suing X, targeting advertisers. Um, uh, you are going after. Uh, according to this filing that you popped up yesterday, uh, media matters to force them to turn over the documents regarding their solicitation of donations to bully advertisers into pulling out of X, the last platform dedicated to free speech in America. Um, you got a, got a lot of pickup on this, Mr. Attorney General. Can you break it down for us? Yeah, look, back uh, in December, Media Matters, which is a radical, progressive, tyrannical group, uh, manipulated algorithms on X, formerly known as Twitter, in order to juxtapose uh, controversial speech next to prominent advertisers. And the whole purpose of doing that was to bully those advertisers into pulling out of X. The left and Media, Matter, Media Matters is included in that. Uh, they hate X because they can't control it. The, the overwhelming majority of the other big tech social media companies are ideologically aligned with them and, and kowtow to their demands and that certainly the censorship demands placed on them by the federal government, as revealed in our lawsuit, Missouri v. Biden. But X is, uh, has been opened up and Elon Musk has done so much on X to ensure fairness, uh, you know, free, fair and open debate. It's a public forum for, for open debate. And I think, uh, you know, Elon Musk celebrates uh, free speech. But what we can't have is a market manipulation in, in the form of a corporate pressure campaign based on lies to destroy one of the last platforms dedicated to free speech in America. And that's what Media Matters did. Yes. So uh, this is where did you where where did you file this? So district? it's filed here in the state of Missouri. Okay. Uh, we we filed civil investigatory demands under our Consumer Protection Authority. You know, we need to find out. Uh, which Missouri donors contributed to this non not for profit Media Matters, and under what pretense? In other words, if Media Matters comes and says, "Hey, we we want you to help us support local media, contribute here," and then they use that money in a market manipulation campaign, that violates the Missouri Merchandising Practices Act. So it's a consumer protection issue as well as a First Amendment issue. You know, God God bless you, Mr. Attorney General. Like we've been begging on this program. It's so important to like take a to like stop and smell the roses, touch grass, as the kids would say, and say like we've been begging on this program for somebody with the with law enforcement power to flip this game on the Soviet style Marxist left who does this day and night to try and like cur curtail and break our freedoms, to break our presidential candidates, to defraud and debank uh, the rest of us. And all it takes is actually somebody pushing back. And so you're, you're actually pushing back. And it's so important because uh, these policies and this worldview can have horrible consequences like it did for a teen in St. Louis that was beaten uh, to nearly uh, to death uh, in her school. Uh, I don't know if this was a racial attack, but the teen was white and the woman, the, the girl who beat her was black and she fractured her skull, life-threatening brain swelling and bleeding. The girl's name is Kaylee. I think everybody everybody saw the, the viral video. We can't play it on the show because it's too gruesome uh, and grotesque. And this happened at the Hazelwood East High School in Spanish Lake, Missouri, just out of St. Louis. Um, your office is doing investigations into this incident. Can you give us an update? Yeah, certainly. And, let, you know, again, thoughts and prayers are with the victim of this gruesome attack. I, I do believe that she had her condition has improved somewhat. But when you suffer that kind of traumatic brain injury, you know, one wonders whether her life will ever be the same. And so what we've got here is a teen attacker violently bludgeoning the victim's head against the hard pavement repeatedly, even after the attacker had rendered the victim incapable of fighting back. There are multiple teens involved. This is in close proximity to the school where the teens are students in broad daylight on a public street. And so again, what systems were in place to prevent this from happening? And what we know is that this school district has a history of promoting radical racial ideology, racially divisive ideology in the form of DEI programs ahead of student safety. Back in August of 2021, the school demanded that the uniformed police officers assigned to the schools 
uh, attend the school's DEI training. And the police department said, no, we're not going to do that. And so the schools booted the law enforcement agencies off of campus. Well, those safety resource officers are in those schools as an early warning system to detect when you have conflicts like this and help put mitigation measures in place to prevent those conflicts from escalating to what amounts to a first degree assault. And but for the grace of God, could have been a homicide. And so, again, this school district bears some culpability here, and we've got to get to the bottom of it. We know that in the school's DEI statement that's published online that they brag about the fact that uniformed police officers are scary to certain ethnic groups. And so, uh, you know, what motivation did this DEI program have in, in preventing the systems from being in place that would have would have mitigated against this escalation in violence? Yeah, uh, the a 15 year old girl was arrested by police. Uh, will this person? and 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 will be in court on assault charges uh, on a state level i mean will this person be tried as a, an adult i mean she nearly murdered one of her classmates and yeah. you talk about you talk about ethnic groups i mean we looked into the school the school is like the the minority in this school was the white girl is the school has like a one percent white population and well, so could you see like bringing superseding charges like a civil rights charge to say that this was a hate crime? Yeah, a co couple of thoughts there. First and foremost, this teen, the attacker, absolutely needs to be tried as an adult. And there's really no discretion under Missouri law. It's section 211071. It mandates that when you have a teen who commits a first degree assault, which is the intent to inflict serious physical injury, which was both the intent as evidenced by the repeated bludgeoning of the victim's head by the assailant against the concrete, and then the resultant serious physical injury, the traumatic brain injury. Uh, when you have a first degree assault like that, there has to be a certification hearing. And teens uh, of this age who commit adult crimes need to be held accountable as adults. The juvenile code exists to serve the best interests of the child. And sweeping something like this under the rug does not serve the best interests of the child because we'll be dealing with more violent behavior later on if there isn't some level of accountability. And again, this is the, multiple teens were involved in this fight. The video really focuses on the attacker and the victim, but multiple teens were engaged in, in, in conflict on the public street, near the school, in broad daylight. you know. So again, we've got to figure out what systems need to be in place to prevent this. And it, it, we absolutely, at the Attorney General's office, have the authority under the Missouri Human Rights Act to file suit and get an injunction against any entity, any entity that whose racist policies are harming individuals. And th this is where the rubber hits the road. I mean, this is absolutely demonstrative of when you place these kind of radically, racially divisive, progressive policies ahead of public safety, this can be the result, and we can't let that happen. There, there needs to be no more victims in the state of Missouri, and we will use the full authority of the Attorney General's office to ensure that that's the case. So it sounds like you're open to potentially bringing civil rights charges as a hate crime, as this is somebody who's being targeted for the color of their skin. Well, certainly we've outlined uh, in, in the demand letter that initiated the investigation to the school, not only the evidence that we were we needed to obtain in order to ascertain you know, what systems were in place here, but to go after these DEI programs and stomp them out once and for all. And there is absolutely legal authority for the attorney general's office to do that. And we're going to let the law enforcement agencies continue their investigation of the criminal offense and wait to see and make sure that not only the, the juvenile court, but the, the juvenile officer do the right thing here and ensure that this uh, teen is held accountable in adult court. Good. This is exactly, this is exactly what should happen there. Like you cannot live in a zero trust society or a consequence free society. Otherwise you will encourage a thousand more incidents like this. And it'll be all of our children everywhere, uh, that'll have to suffer from this. And that is not a world we want to live in. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, let's think about this, how this culture of violence amongst these teens escalated to the point that there was a, nearly a homicide. I mean, these teens live in a congressional district where they're represented by uh, Corey Bush, who has shamefully called for the defunding of police repeatedly while spending millions of dollars on her own personal security. And they were in close proximity to the Soros back prosecutor in the city of St. Louis, Kim Gardner, who had a 96 percent non-prosecution rate. So it's unsurprising that these kids have grown up in an environment where it appears that there's no consequences for criminal behavior. Yes, yes. Please, like so, somebody call the National Guard. It's it St. Louis, man. I we went to St. Louis the uh, for for a shoot like a two years ago with McCloskey's, and and the, you know they were really interesting and, and quite a, you know quite an interesting story at that time, um, and I still love them. They're still great, but like it, it's it was wild, it was wild uh, to see the deterioration of that once fine and remarkable American city. It's, it really breaks your heart because you'll never get cities like that back. Right. St. Louis used to be a truly great place, um, yeah. a truly remarkable American city. Well, again, it, it, 
the left doesn't want you to, they want to have you hide your head in the sand like an ostrich and ignore the fact that their radical woke agenda, you know, prioritizes ridiculous indoctrination ahead of the public good. It used to be that Republicans and Democrats disagreed around the margins of how much should be spent on that bridge, or is this the proper place to build a bridge? But now, uh, you know, Pete Buttigieg would have us destroy all bridges that he calls racist. I have no idea an inanimate object can be racist. So this is the kind of silliness you get from the left, and people are suffering. And that, that is the end result of that kind of woke left-wing uh, ideology ahead of the public good. Yes. Well, we say thank you, sir. Godspeed, Mr. Attorney General. We we gripe and we complain on this program that more attorney generals don't do what you do. And it's, it, it is incumbent upon us. It's our duty to stop and smell the, to stop and say, thanks to the attorney generals that are actually making a great difference. Everybody go and follow the attorney general, please. 109,000 people can't be wrong. One of the best out there doing it today. Attorney general, Andrew Bailey. Godspeed. Thank you, sir. Ooh, baby, we got a hot story coming up for you. P. Diddy getting his homes raided in a sex trafficking op by the feds with helicopters and boats and battering rams and like an army that went through to raid and they were taking computers out of there. And I, man, we're going to cover it all. It's, it's a wild story. Just wild. We also have one of our favorite rappers coming on the program for Giotto to talk us through what's actually happening here in the music industry. What What is this truly all about? But first, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm sure that <laughs> you've seen some sick stories. We're about to cover one in your feed. And maybe it's time for some wellness. The wellness company is the company that I use to protect my family against whatever globalist pandemic they have cooking up in whatever little dark Chinese lab that they have evil plans for us is certainly not news to this audience. Be prepared, not scared. You need the wellness company. Their kits are the gold standard when it comes to staying healthy and being ready for anything. These life-saving medications are a guidebook and aid for you in emergency situations, antibiotic, antivirals, antiparasitics to have on hand. Go to twc.health slash Benny. That's twc.health slash Benny and enter the code Benny for 10% off. See side for details. Prescriptions may be required. Well, I got a uh, prescription, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for more cowbell. Right? Is that the Christopher Walken thing? I got, I got, a, I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that was a skit, a skit from Saturday Night Live, Christopher Walken, uh, talking to recording artists, and ta and and being sort of like a like a caricature of the uh, goofy slash creepy recording industry. And man, did we get more cowbell yesterday! When the bells rang and federal agents came pouring into Diddy's house, we'll call him Diddy for the sake of this inter, for the sake of this segment. Uh, Diddy, the rapper, who is of course world famous, very very rich, extremely prominent. Uh, many are calling him the Jeffrey Epstein of the music industry. He has multiple pending charges against him in courts of law from accusers with a wide range of sexual abuses, uh, some of them underage, really sick stuff. Uh, but it gets far, far worse. It always gets worse, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the raid on Diddy's house was uh, shocking, quite frankly. I haven't seen anything like this since like OJ. Uh, you can see the federal agents bursting uh, down the doors, busting down the doors in these mansions. Oh, look at that. This is what systemic racism looks like in America. Just a reminder that people like P. Diddy, they can never get ahead, you know? Look at this. Poor guy just has to live in this 80,000-foot mansion in the middle of L.A. This is what systemic, this is, this is what systemic racism looks like, yeah. Uh, actually, this may be what justice looks like for one of the, so, so for some of the world's largest monsters. I mean, if you were engaged in, in sex trafficking or child trafficking, um, you deserve to be in cuffs and you deserve to be locked away and have the key thrown out. Thrown out. So uh, allegedly, these are family members of the rapper. The rapper himself uh, was nowhere to be found. Uh, and his plane had left 
the airport that was just down the road from his mansion and flew to Antigua in the Caribbean. So what the hell is this about? Uh, we speculated that, and everyone speculated that he was on that plane and he was fleeing the country. It turns out that the rapper actually appeared in Miami. His home in Miami was raided. By the way, they used like the federal boats to raid it. So you had these boats pulling up to his to his house on uh, you know Star Island, where all the celebrities live. Here's uh, here's the rapper pacing about at a private airport when federal agents detained him. Uh, no word yet as to whether he is arrested or if they have brought charges, but uh, fellow rapper Fitty Scent uh, is up on social media saying that the feds don't come like this unless they have you dead to rights, right? And so we'll see, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see what happens. Uh, is this the moment that some of these monsters begin to suffer the consequences for their actions? Remember, the F around era is over. The find out era has begun. Cat Williams is a obvious, obviously a celebrity and a Hollywood insider and an industry insider for a very long time. He had a very creepy uh, prediction on a podcast about a year ago where he said in 2024, people like Diddy, uh, they're going to find out all these people who are deviants are going to be arrested and nothing can stop it. Uh, okay, that's quite prescient, quite a prescient prediction. Uh, here it is. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All. Mm, spill the tea. I know he's drinking Hennessy or scotch or bourbon or something. But spill the tea, Cat Williams. And Cat Williams has been doing a series of podcast interviews. We should effort to Cat Williams. I would love to have him on the show. Find out. We can have a tea party. Uh, Diddy, of course as they all are, all of these compromised people, Diddy was in 2020 saying that it's Donald Trump who's actually the problem and men like Donald Trump, specifically white men like Donald Trump need to be banished. Now, is this because Donald Trump was the president who stopped the most amount of sex trafficking and child trafficking into the country by shutting down the border? Is this why, along with instructing federal law enforcement to really focus on this issue? I think we have statistics on that actually. Maybe we can dig that up. Is there a reason why he didn't like Trump? Is, it, is this all coming to the light? The reason that Diddy actually didn't like Trump and endorse Joe Biden was because Donald Trump was stopping the sex trafficking? Remember, that's why it had to be 200 federal agents in tactical gear raided Diddy's home. You can see the photos of them carrying out evidence, laptops, phones, books. What did this guy have? And what do they have on this guy, right? And like, what, what do they have on this guy that makes him do in humiliating videos like this where he's saying Trump's a threat? Oh, really? Is Trump a threat to your sex trafficking? Is that it? Is that why they hate Trump? Have a listen. If this man is elected, we're not standing by no more getting killed. We're not scared of anybody standing up and standing by. We're on the verge of a, a race war. White men like Trump need to be banished. That way of thinking is real dangerous. Mm -hmm. When you look at it, we don't have no choice. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can say what you want about Biden. I, I, I can't say I love the pick either, but hey, we got to get him in office mm -hmm. and then we got to hold him accountable. Oh, okay. White men like Trump got to be banished, says the accused sex pest, rapist, tra trafficker. You know, there's a footage of a, of a dude, his neighbor is now going viral. The footage of his neighbor yesterday saying, oh yeah, there were like busloads of uh, women being brought into this mansion all the time, like in, 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 in giant SUVs, in buses. Like, what were they doing? I don't know. Also, the fact that they were raiding multiple, if you got, you got to know how federal law enforcement works, the fact that they're raiding multiple homes in, in perfect synchronization, 
uh, proves that not only are these federal crimes, but these are interstate crimes. So violations of the Mann Act, this is something that Hunter Biden should be prosecuted for, is uh, bringing uh, obviously sex workers or transporting uh, women for sex work or people for sex work uh, across state lines. And that's something that the, the federal government has oversight on because state, obviously state law is bound to the vicinity of the, the state borders, what's happening in the state borders. So the federal government actually cracking down on this m- makes it seem like it's a much larger sting operation or a cover-up operation. Candace Owens is saying that what's happening here is a, is a massive cover-up. Here's what the the neighbor had to say, saying this, this mansion, like day and night, there were massive buses come rolling into this mansion uh, with women in them. Uh, we, we thought that was a little weird. Here we go. I was taken back. I was really shocked. I mean, I, I never I never even expected this to happen. I've seen women once a week, girls lingering outside. I drive by a lot um, and I see that a lot of girls, maybe five or six girls outside, some leaving, some not, some going in, black suburbans. Never know. I never thought anything of it, but now this is crazy. Mm, okay. So a bunch of like women going in in black suburbans. Got to banish white guys like Donald Trump. Why? Well, here's the data. Because what Donald Trump did was increase the prosecutions. It's kind of hard to read this data, but this is human trafficking. This is prosecutions of human trafficking since 2010. And you can see a really sharp rise there with Donald Trump. Meanwhile, of course, Donald Trump closing the border and not allowing human traffickers to operate. Donald Trump didn't actually need a wall to close the border. You can check the immigration numbers. I want a wall. Donald Trump should build the wall 10 feet higher in his second term. But Donald Trump was able to effectively cease uh, illegal immigration and criminal alien migration uh, into this country, which is all human trafficking. All of it is human trafficking based. Um, And these people pay their indentured servants, the human traffickers forever. They go work for Diddy or otherwise. Shutting that down is one of the greatest, greatest goods uh, that anyone can ever do. Encouraging that and opening that up. Uh, is a depraved, demonic evil. Will we see more depraved, demonic evil from Diddy? We told you that Candace Owens was up saying, uh, hey, you know what? This is uh, this is not them coming down to get evidence. This is them hiding evidence. They're, they're there to gather uh, the evidence to protect the people at the top of the ring, is what Candace had to say. And so the feds are there to uh, essentially capture and kill the evidence. This is the same thing with Jeffrey Epstein. Have you ever seen any of Jeffrey Epstein's documents? The federal agents raided Epstein Island. Like as soon as, as soon as Epstein was in lockup, they raided Epstein Island and carried away bags of stuff. Have you ever seen any of those documents? Do we know what he was doing on that? Does anybody know? Why did the feds raid Little St. James? What's actually going on here? Well, Candace Owens knows a number of, number of big time Hollywood celebrities and rappers. And so does our next guest. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest is our favorite MAGA rapper. Forgiato Blow, uh, who hopefully can shed some blingy insight into this topic. Let's go. Forgiato, I knew you'd be wearing that bling. Yes, yes, <laughs> thank you, King. So uh, P. Diddy, alleged sex trafficker, want Donald Trump banned. Men like him need to be banned. Why? For shutting down sex trafficking? Like, what's actually happening here? White men like him had to be banned. That was the exact word. This is crazy. But I mean, is it surprising? Hollywood makes videos every day about this for kids to play. It's promoted. It's monetized, making millions of dollars off people doing it. Um, they want to make movies about this type of stuff. Uh, Disney, all this type of things. You know, Target, we went through already with them. It just seems like that culture is being ran by, we'll use the word, these sick people, right? Um, end of the day, it's like, I think he missed an Illuminati payment. You know what I'm saying? Missed the payment to somebody that's very, you know, very high up. I feel like, you know, you've seen it with R. Kelly. We've seen it with Bill Cosby. You know, they let these people get away with this for 20, 25 years when they need them. And when they don't need them anymore, they come in, throw the dirt at them and, uh, you know, take them down. But, you know, I think he's just the hit guy. He's the fall guy. There's more people involved in this, just him. And, you know, why is it taking so long? And um, how do they just let him just continue to leave and just not arrest him? Anything like that is just you know, baffling to me, but at the end of the day, it's just, it's about the control. 
these artists these days in music. He was a young guy at one time. They sell their soul. They sign their life away and they don't have a life anymore. So all they get is the benefits, right? And then they get indulged in this crazy sex life, this crazy sex activity. Um, they lose their faith in God. They go down a very evil path. And the next thing you know, it's just, this is what they're doing to keep it going. It's keep them going surprised every day. We've heard about him with his ex-girlfriends. He was all about control, right? This is all about control. And who do we know that's all about control? Joe Biden. And this is why they're so mad about Trump because Trump can't be controlled. We know Trump closed that border. We know Trump saved the children. You know, there's a lot of things. It's in stats. You just played it. Mm -hmm. Trump was here. Trump made a lot of good changes. Um, Diddy's been obviously a big mouth against Donald Trump. Um, maybe that's because he thought he was the biggest boss in New York and realized he's not. Donald Trump was. So a lot of things I want to parse out here and a lot of different avenues. But first, I want to sort of establish the fact that uh, you've worked with and worked for and rapped with uh, rappers that are on Diddy's level uh, with some of the biggest rappers in the game. You know, these people. I don't. I don't have any friends that are, uh, you know, that are that are rapper other than you, Forgiato. And so no, you're my access point here. Right. And so you're my access point, but you know, right? You know this industry. You've seen the inside of this industry. When you saw this news break, what was your unvarnished opinion on what was going on? It's not surprising to me because he's just one of a million. They're all like this. The whole industry is like this. This is why I decided to change over. You know, at one time I did make degenerate music and it started really changing my mind when I started coming for Trump. I told you it was about Trump being a boss. Trump had the women. He had the lifestyle. I started going to the route. I saw all these little kids running up to me saying they love my music. And I'm like, man, they're really paying attention to what I'm rapping about. So maybe I should use my voice for the better. And that's what I did. But I wasn't surprised. I mean, as I'm trying to tell you, they let movies come out every single day. You're talking to someone that's been banned for rapping about positivity and rapping about our country and rapping about changing the youth. If I rapped about the old stuff I rapped about, I'd be promoted. They'd be, they'd be loved. You know, I, I had all my social medias then. I had YouTubes then. I had all this stuff. So it's just the culture's being controlled by Hollywood. And there's bigger ups. Diddy's just the fall guy for something that he did wrong or they're just so, done with him. So you're saying fall guy. A lot of people, Candace Owens is one of them, but a lot of people across social media are saying if 50 cent is one of them saying that he is not the head of the snake here. He's like the front person for a much darker, sinister thing going on behind the scenes. You know, what is that thing? He's just the face of it. You know, he's just the guy that they said, look, you know, a lot of people these days will take a great life of 30 years to lose it like this. Instead of just living a crazy, you know, uh, not so happy and maybe a God first life and just a little more boring of a life. You got to look, somebody like him can hop on a plane any minute, go wherever he wants, buy whatever he wants. Money's not a thing. You know, that beautiful house right there I saw that's in his daughter's name. You know, he's very smart putting things probably not in his name because he knew one day this would come. But 50 Cent is always spot on with everything, right? If 50 Cent says it, I'm just pretty much going to back it. And he knows if they send that many agents to you, they got a real case. This isn't something like a joke. You know what I'm saying? They send more stuff to him with Trump. Trump didn't have that many agents outside his place because they knew there was no case. There was no case there. It was a very interesting uh, observation there. So when you, you make, you cracked a joke about the Illuminati, but how real is that? Right? How real is it? Uh, let's, let's take like the, let's pull back the veil of secrecy. How real is it that there is a elite entity that can make you or break you. And if you wish to actually be big uh, inside of the corporate industries that run all of this, that you have to uh, bend the knee. That's with anything in the world. I mean, even in certain jobs, you know, there's this why sexual harassment things in certain jobs where people are trying to get a new job and they got the boss and they're cute and the boss wants them to do whatever to get the promotion, right? Music is the same way. They get you when you're young, they control you. They know they control the youth with your voice and what you're going to do for them. And they pretty much promise you everything in the world to do what they want you to do. So, you know, they guarantee you fame, right? With a push of a button, they can make anybody famous. They control TV shows. They control the movies. They control the movie soundtracks. They have the greatest producers, the greatest camera people, the most beautiful stylists, the clothes. They have everything that they're you want as a young artist, right? And there's a different level. It's like somebody like me, I could reach a very high tier and have number one records and outsell people like Taylor Swift who are in the Illuminati, but my career would never be like a Taylor Swift who's went and sold or sold the Illuminati. I can't go sell an arena for 100,000 people. Right. So I think that's something they don't understand about Trump. Trump can do that. Trump could get 100,000 people in the world to go somewhere. That's why he's one of the few that could really break the code. But it's like I said, if they get you when you're young, they 
promise you everything that you want. You sign your life away. You've got babysitters around you all day. They feed you drugs. You know, they, they promise you these great contracts. If you do what they say, if you lay in bed with the devil, I see it with Doja Cat. You see it with Nicki Minaj. You see it with the Cardi B's. You see it with the Taylor Swift's. Look with the crap Taylor Swift's pushing. All her yeah. songs are about not picking the right man. She obviously doesn't pick the right man. She endorsed Joe Biden. It's all about pushing what their, their message, you know, that's all they're doing. So these charges, uh, you know, it sure, sure as hell looks like they're going to stick. I mean, they don't bring these, this kind of force. You think that they're, they, you think they're, they're sewing his mouth shut. You think they're, that they, Diddy is the fall guy for something much larger and much bigger and that they're protecting the actual institution that made him. I think they're protecting the list of whoever his people were, or whoever he was involved with. Right. Um, and maybe they thought that Diddy wasn't going to, you know, maybe he was starting to feel antsy and he was going to come out. They've been hounding him for a while. They've been hounding him about the death of Notorious B.I.G. They've been hounding him about the death of Tupac Shakur. They've been hounding him about all his latest girlfriends that came out that were stuck in these contracts and they went and did lawsuits and he paid them that day. It's like when they come, everybody comes, right? Mm. And I think that's what's really happening. I think everybody's coming at him and I think he's had a been living in the dark for a long time and that's why he's just – you know, when they're coming like that, you just give in, man. Just do what you want to do. It's just like it's they're going to ruin him over this, but he deserves to be ruined over this because he ruined a lot of other people on the way to where he got. Mm -hmm. Do you, when you said sell your souls, la last question, I think is really more. When you say sell your soul, like we listened to Cat Williams' interview and we were kind of shocked by that, right? Like the actual demon worshiping parties and so you, you've heard you've heard people talk about this in Hollywood for a long time. Eddie Murphy and talking about this this the industry, you quite literally need to worship the devil. Uh, in order to make it. And you saw um, Ice Spice, like what she was doing. She was like doing devil worshiping stuff at the Super Bowl with an upside down cross on. I mean, man, they're, they're, subtlety is not uh, these people's forte. Uh, is, does that stuff actually go on inside of the music yeah, industry? There, yeah, there's parties like that. They have sex parties, devil worshiping parties, all type of thing you can think of. Um, I think a lot of it, sometimes also people do it as a joke because they think it's funny, right? To talk about the devil and do all this, but it's real. The devil's real. God's real. And selling your soul to get where you want for these riches is real. Um, like look, little Nas X, right? Little Nas X. He came out with the great song, you know, uh, the ride, the uh, horse song. And then um, old town road song that all of a sudden he's Nick's gender going up and down stripper poles. I mean, he, this is being played by eight, nine year old, 10 year old kids in the world. Mm, yeah. It's very scary what they're pushing. He didn't decide just to do that one day. And then I also feel a lot of times these people get these contracts, they get promised all this stuff. They catch them. They have them do some type of act. That's not good for them. Videotape it. No matter what we own you for life and we'll put this out on you one day. So next thing you know, they got this act on you. You might as well just do the same thing. The acts are doing over and over and it becomes a lifestyle to you. Yeah. This is why people are saying P Diddy is the Epstein of the, the music industry still yeah, having yeah. no Epstein list though. Yeah, that's right. So Where's the may, list I mean, I would go, with, I would go with, Can I'd go <laughs> with Candace on this one, man. Like we, we, you know, we, we went to Candace's documentary, uh, premiere and it's like kid rock, Jason Aldean, Ray J's there. Kanye's there. Like she knows. And she's like, this is a cleanup job. This is a mop up job. Like this guy had a bunch of evidence on a bunch of people and they're going in to seize the evidence. Well, I think Diddy, even in his newest interview that he was talking about how bad Trump was, you could see it on his face. It's like he's being told what to say. Mm. If he's so rich, he doesn't care about his people. He doesn't care about the community. He's already rich. He doesn't care. He's living his life. This is what he's been told to say. You know, mm. we'll see. Maybe Biden will pardon him if anything happens to him. Who knows? Yeah. Better happen yeah. quick because Trump's coming back to the White House in 2024. Mm. And that boy's not getting a pardon through Trump. <laughs> Uh, before you, before you go for Giotto, uh, one, you have a, you have a, uh, a, tell me about the new song that you have out and two, tell me about that, uh, sweet Trump piece you got right there around your neck. So right there's Trump Save the USA is one of my favorite songs. We actually shot that outside of Miami where Trump was in there getting indicted. This is uh, something I made right here for Trump. This is a hundred thousand dollars of solid gold. Trump's nephew here. Everyone's been taking pictures of this on. This is like a moving billboard for Trump. I got the MAGA bling, the MAGA ring. I mean, you can be a rapper and be true to yourself and enjoy life and make money and, you know, and be around great people, people that feel the same way I feel and want to live in a great country and let the kids just be kids. You can do that being a rapper. You don't got to sell your soul right there. That was a boss picture right there. If I ever need a lawyer, I got a lawyer on call right there. That was going viral. <laughs> Where can people find your work, Forgiato? This Twitter, Forgiato Blow 47. 
Also, you know, I got the Trump Latinos out here. We're working hard. We're trying to save America. Love everything you're doing. I love every time you guys allow me on the show. <laughs> 200,000 people can't be wrong. Head over and follow Forgiato and make sure that you download, listen to his music, support independent creators, support creators that want to save this country. Godspeed, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you all so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that dovetails quite nicely into supporting independent creators. We are an independent creator. There's been a lot of drama recently in uh, con the conservative media space. And it's at moments like this that makes us really, really happy that we are independent. Can you please help us maintain our independence so that we can deliver for you on shows and the news and live events? We will be here for you. If you could be here for us, join the Benny Brigade to show up for us costs less than a big gulp at 7-Eleven per month to join and to support uh, our show and the incredible team of creators and patriots that we have on this program that make this operation work. Sign up for the Benny Brigade, obviously, for major exclusives, discounts, deals, and the ability to ask questions on our show every single Friday. The Ask Benny Anything. Uh, we take exclusive questions from the Brigade. Uh, God bless you. We like thank we are thankful for you. We are thankful for this audience. We'll uh, we are we are our 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 mission is to uh, serve this audience uh, and to show up for this audience uh, in a way that no other creator will or can or has the capacity to do. We're going to work like animals, uh, especially this year. This is the year that we save the country, and it's good to have your focus in the right place when you wish to save the country. And that place should be the Almighty. That's why every single show we have a verse of the day. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love from Psalms 33. The eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope for his steadfast love. I've told the story before, but I'll say it again. Jim Caviezel, the man who played uh, Christ in The Passion of the Christ, was on this program. And he said something that will make my hair stand up on end uh, for the rest of my life. Uh, Jim Caviezel said, I, I don't fear Satan. I fear God. You should, you should fear God. God has power over Satan. God will destroy Satan. And you should fear God. You shouldn't fear the devil. All these Hollywood people, t you know, like, like sacrificing their souls literally, uh, to the, to the devil. Um, well, obviously that's wrong, but also you, you, you don't understand you're shortchanging yourself. Like you're sacrificing your eternal soul for, for, for what? For what? A, a mansion? A private jet? I, I mean, what is it at what cost? Right? Like, like fear God, please. Actually, our, our exceptional production team was able to grab this clip at a blistering pace. So why not play it? Here's Jim Caviezel telling us exactly this. Fasting with prayer, very powerful. I, I don't have the same fear of the devil that most people have. I fear God. Mm. I fear God. I don't fear the devil. I fear God. My God could kick the devil's ass without a glance. And he is, I'm not a sheep. My God can kick the devil's ass. Is that, uh, what you believe every single morning when you get up? Do you have that faith and that fear of God? Well, that will carry you through the day. We're happy to have carried you for uh, the last hour and a half on this wild show. We'll be here for you. It's your boy, Benny. March with us. We are headed to victory. You cannot defeat an army of happy warriors. Join us, ladies and gentlemen. See ya.